Welcome, everybody. Happy Thursday. How's everybody doing? Let us know who is here in the chat. If you want to let us know where you're joining from, please do so. Jackie says, greetings, lovely friends. Christine, happy Thursday, Jackie, and lovely tribe members. Welcome. If this is your first time with me, my name is Jackie Mancuso. I am joining you guys from Northern Illinois, and today we're here to talk about what is happening with the astrology in the sky right now. Uh, and then we're gonna pull some oracle cards. Sorry, I forgot to put my phone on, do not disturb. And then we're gonna pull some oracle cards to see how to utilize the available energy in accordance with our highest good. Let us know if it's your first time, also. We can, uh, we can give you the initiation. <laughs> Just kidding, there's no initiation. Good morning, Patty. Deborah says, good morning from the Catskill Mountains of New York. That sounds lovely. Uh, I'm gonna show my ignorance here because I can't even fathom mountains in New York. That was just like never something that crossed my mind. That's pretty cool. I, I mean, upstate New York, I'm assuming, right? Brenda, good morning, beautiful souls joining from Texas. Welcome, Brenda. Patty, blessings from New Jersey. Welcome. Greg, good morning, beautiful people. Nice to have you. Jennifer, good morning, everyone. Lori says, hello, everyone, and Jackie. <laughs> Melissa, good Thursday from Denver. Welcome, Melissa. My cousin lives in the Denver area. Englewood? I think he's in Englewood. Lisa, first time from Michigan. Welcome, Lisa. Happy to have you here. P is from Oregon. Welcome. Deborah is in a tiny remote town. I am blessed. That sounds fantastic. Bonnie says, welcome, Lisa and all. Hi, Bonnie. How are you today? Hello, S. Welcome, welcome. Anna says, good afternoon from the beach of the Indian Ocean. That sounds like a fantastic place to be also. Very cool. So I was here on Monday. Oh my gosh, I can't even remember what we talked about on Monday. I am dragging this week, <laughs> this whole week. I just have like nothing to give um, <laughs> to a certain extent. I'm approaching a lengthy meditation retreat. So in, what is it, two weeks? Hold on, my calendar brain shut off for a second. Is it in two weeks? Wow, yeah. Um, so on October 11th, I'm leaving for a 10-day silent Vipassana meditation retreat. And I think my body is just like craving the seclusion and the silence and the introspection. And I'm having so much resistance to like doing anything nowadays. So I apologize if my brain isn't on par today. Jackie says, welcome, Lisa. Jackie is addictive. I love it. Bonnie is great. Great to hear. Hi, Christine. Lisa says, thanks for all the intros. Hello, Anique. Nice to have you here. Melissa says, same here on the, uh, this week has been interesting. Nancy, take me with you. So this is actually, um, they have Vipassana centers. I typed Vipassana in the chat. They have Vipassana centers all over the United States. Um, in order to attend the retreat, you do have to do a 10-day intro silent meditation retreat. Um, I went to one about six years ago, and I made it halfway through, and I had a download, and I had to go get the man of my dreams, and I left. Um, so I'm going back for round two. I'm going back to do my second 10-day. Um, but once you finish the 10-day retreat, you can go for a three-day or a five-day. Um, but these centers are all donation-based. So it's available for everyone. Uh, they do their retreats on a pretty regular basis. So if it uh, if it appeals to you, I would just search Vipassana Retreat or Vipassana Retreat Center and see what comes up. It's probably like the main like the first website that comes up, but they're literally all over the world. 
Lori says, wonderful. Enjoy your time in silence. I can't wait. Bonnie, I wouldn't last. I don't fast and I don't shut up. Maybe you would be surprised at what would happen if you did. Christine, I have resistance to do too... I have resistance too to do much too, but I think it's the change in seasons for me. That could be also... Uh, I was actually, just this morning, I was um, reflecting on how I already feel like it's November. Like, my mind just goes from autumn to, oh no, it's almost winter. <laughs> like, panic mode. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Jackie says, I love me a good silent retreat. Sandy, I've been looking for something like this. Thanks for sharing. You're welcome. You're welcome. All right, let's talk about the full moon that is happening tomorrow morning. So tomorrow at 4.57 a.m. Central Time, there's going to be a full moon at 6 degrees of Aries. So if you want to find where 6 degrees of Aries falls in your natal chart to see which house this full moon is landing in for yourself personally, um, you would look to see where the Aries glyph is it's the one that looks like a v with little hoops uh horns coming off the top and the zodiac cycle moves counterclockwise so you'll go from zero to six there's 30 degrees in each sign so I'll just go six degrees ish in um, and look to see what's going on there and then look to see what house this full moon might be illuminating some things for you Bonnie says, I just finished raising kids. I'm not going to keep myself from anything for a while. That's fair. That's fair, Bonnie. Um, I made the slip when I was typing my notes. I went to go type full moon and I typed feel moon, which I thought was really interesting. Um, and maybe this is calling for more of our emotion. The full moon is happening in Aries, which is a fire sign. And fire isn't necessarily known for its emotion. Usually the water element is tied more towards emotion. Um, but fire does represent passion and ambition, which can come from your feelings, right? So just a, a strange slip that I typed feel moon and I wanted to save it and say something about it. Um, but full moons in general are a time of closure. And I like to bring in the celebration aspect because when you close something out, it's not always like, oh, thank God that's over. Get it out of my life. There's blessings that come from everything. So closing a cycle and celebrating what has come out of it. Mari says you'll miss your dog. Um, I know that I'll see them again when I get back. I'm pretty good at just going with the flow. Like, yeah, I would obviously prefer to be with my dogs. But I also know that I need um, my time. <laughs> Which is actually what we're going to be talking about with this Aries full moon. Whitney, does fire have anything to do with anger? The shadow side of fire can be anger. Um, every element, every sign, everything ever has a light side and a shadow side, like a higher expression and a lower expression. So I would place anger in the lower expression of fire. Good morning from New Jersey. Welcome, Lopa Mudra. Bonnie says you can also connect with the dogs in the Akash. I can. Uh, all right, so this full moon, <clears throat> every full moon means that the sun and the moon are opposite of each other in the sky. So in this case, the sun is at six degrees of Libra, and the moon is at six degrees of Aries. So to get more information on the specific full moon, I take a look at what the sun is doing, what the moon is doing, and I look to see if there's any aspects, if there's anything playing around with the sun or the moon in the sky. And for this full moon, there's not. So then the next step to get more information is to look at the ruler of the full moon. So the full moon today is in, or tomorrow, is in Aries. And I'm going to let you guys tell me what's the ruler of Aries. What planet rules Aries? Yeah. This is half 
uh, teaching, half also you guys learning. Mars. Mars is the ruler of Aries. Great job, guys. Amy, Greg, Jackie, you got it. A plus for the day. So since the full moon is in Aries, and Aries is ruled by Mars, you could take a look at what is Mars doing during this full moon. Mars right now is in Libra, <laughs> and Mars is not the most comfortable when he's in Libra. Mars is an action planet. He says, give me a task and I'll run with it. However, in Libra, Mars has to keep both sides balanced. He can't just run off into one direction. He's like obligated to keep the peace, but not necessarily. He, he needs to give equal attention to both sides. So the full moon ruler sitting in the same sign as the sun, right? So sun and moon, Aries, moon, Libra, sun, and Mars. This strengthens and highlights the axis of Aries and Libra. There's just a little bit more energy than normal in the full moon. This axis is Aries me versus Libra us. The individual versus the partnership, not versus, the individual in relation to the relationship. So Mars in Libra is also only three degrees away from the south node. The nodes of the moon, just briefly, if you're not familiar, the nodes of the moon have to do with the ecliptic path um, and they rotate uh, every 18 months into new signs. In July, we just moved the nodes into Aries and Libra. The nodes of the moon represent fate. They represent karma. They represent um, our destiny, our collective destiny. What, Where the nodes are right now is kind of uh, pulling us, north node pulls us towards our north star, where we need to be going in order to achieve higher consciousness. The south node highlights what karma we're ready to get rid of, what karma is ready to be, the cycle is ready to be finished. So, North node right now is in Aries. South node is in Libra. Mars is only three degrees away from that south node. They're, they are going to come conjunct in early October on the 4th, and I'll talk about that. I am on Insight Timer that day. Um, but Mars is giving power and passion to south node, letting go of the shadow side of Libra tendencies. And this is what we've been working on since July. We'll be working on it for the next 13-ish months. Um, but we are, as a collective, so everyone is affected by the South Node in Libra, getting rid of people-pleasing, getting rid of following the status quo just because we're supposed to, just because it keeps the peace. Okay, we're getting rid of themes of not speaking up because you don't want to rock the boat. We're getting rid of that energy of keeping the peace, keeping things friendly to your own detriment, putting yourself last and putting everyone else first. Mars is helping us have that passion, that excitement, that drive to get rid of that. Because Mars is so close to the south node, the nodes of the moon are always 180 degrees away. They're always opposite. So that also means that Mars is opposite of the north node. Mars 21 of Libra, north node 24 of Aries. So this adds some pressure. Mars is adding pressure to the north node um, and some confrontation. And I was sitting with this and I, I usually try to sit with like, okay, what energy, like what motion are the, the planets, the astral bodies giving to each other? Um, and today I was sitting with Mars across from the North Node and I saw him kind of like, you wanna go? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> let's do it. So I'm seeing the North Node is like our North Star. This is the direction we're supposed to be headed in order to achieve highest consciousness. Mars is across the sky like, yeah, let's go, let's fight. Um, so this is like adding that pressure to act Mars in alignment with your highest good, North Node in Aries. So acting in your highest good regarding what you want and what you need, getting your needs met. 
The theme of personal power is so strong in this full moon. Full moon bringing closure to making yourself small to make others happy. That's what I feel like the biggest theme of tomorrow's full moon is. Um, and actually, coincidentally, but there are no coincidences, this morning I did a meditation on Insight Timer. It's called Daily Grounding and Immunity Boosting by Leo Max. I already posted it in the group that I have on Insight Timer. So it's already in our spiritual community. Um, but I was making my notes about the full moon and a quote from today's meditation popped in my head. So he says, putting yourself first isn't selfish. It's taking care of the most important person in your world first. Because if you're here to help others, you can do that even better when you have lots to offer because you're recharged, because you're filled up with your own light. So it's necessary um, in order to be of best service to others, you need to put yourself first and you need to get your own needs met and set your own boundaries and fulfill yourself. This is also the final lunar event before we go into eclipse season. So I just think it's interesting that this is like a closure of closures. Like this is the last chapter before we start the new... I wish I knew different words. I'm, I'm feeling this like an act in a play. Like act whatever is over with this full moon. This is like the curtains going down. You're closing out this cycle of people pleasing. <laughs> And then when eclipse season comes, mid-October, it'll be like the next act. And here's the start of a whole new, blah, huge change. So let me know what questions come up from all of that, how that's resonating with you. We'll pull some cards in a second. Um, but Jackie says, this comes back to filling your own cup and giving the spillover. Yeah. 100%. You have to, if you, you can't pour from an empty vessel, you have to put yourself first so that you can fill for other people. Because that is the purpose of our incarnation is to um, be of service, but not 100% of service. It's a 50-50. You know, you have to give to yourself an equal amount that you're giving to others. We're not designed to just Give, 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 give. Amy's asking more about the south node. So the nodes take about 18 months to transit through the whole sign. Um, and actually this Libra season, we're gonna have a few planets interacting with the south node. So um, Mars is gonna make a conjunction with the south node. The Sun is going to make a conjunction with the South Node, and Mercury is going to make a conjunction with the South Node all before uh, the end of October. So the South Node is like wrapping up what we've already mastered, and this is like the residual that's no longer serving us. So the, the energy of the time right now, the, the quality of the time right now feels like, okay, I've done my part. I've given enough outwardly, like I've kept the balance, um, and now the balance might be being a little skewed, and it's time for me to recognize where I've been giving too much energy and to give where I haven't been giving enough. But South Node in Libra is like the, when I say shadow aspect, I mean like the not so great aspect. Libra always wants to keep the peace. It doesn't want to say the wrong thing because it doesn't want to upset someone. It wants to make sure that everyone else is comfortable even when you're screaming inside. That's South Node Libra. So uh, you always have to look at both sides. North Node Aries. I've, I see this a lot as speaking up and I'm trying to sit with is that a personal thing or is that like a, a whole thing? And it can be, you know. Um, but like speaking up for your needs and not in an aggressive way, that would be shadow side Aries. 
shadow side Aries is that ego. I know what I want and I'm going to stomp on you so I can get what I want. Higher expression of Aries is just that quiet confidence of I know who I am. I know what I want. I'm here to get it. I'm not trying to do anything uh, detrimental to anyone else. <laughs> I'm just here to get my own needs met so that I can give back to you all. Melinda, all of this is exactly what I've, what's been going on in my life. Really resonates for me. And I've always been a people pleaser. A Libra, my birthday is September 30th. Well, happy early birthday. Um, this is, everything always comes in a spiral. You, you tend to repeat similar lessons throughout your life. So if you've always been a people pleaser, I'm sure you've healed some of it. You know, you're not the same people pleaser you were when you were a teenager. And you know what I'm saying. Bonnie says, I've been, examine, been examining the themes of selflessness and suffering. This is a timely session for me. Cool. I can't wait to see what the cards say. Tiffany feeling incredibly lost and unsure where I'm headed. Doing everything I can to keep pushing, but feel like I'm losing my faith, finding my footing. This is something uh, that excites me, is like not knowing where I'm going, not knowing what's going on. Um, you have the choice of how you utilize the energy. Um, this, this is where it comes down to just trusting the universe, trusting that you're always on your right path, you're always on your highest path, um, and you could do so with intention. Um, the more you reprogram your subconscious to know that everything always works out, right? You've already survived 100% of your terrible days. So with that logic, you know that you're always going to survive 100% of your next upcoming terrible days. Um, so just go for the ride. Let the universe take you. Ragdoll it. I brought that up to a client yesterday. I was like, yeah, the universe is kind of thrashing me around and I'm just doing ragdoll. <laughs> and the look on her face was just like, Oh no, are you okay? I'm like, yeah, it's great. It's wonderful. Like I'm on a, a white water rafting adventure <laughs> without having to pay for it. That's funny. Aw, Bonnie says, Melinda, I feel that for you. Jackie has taught me a lot about boundaries. Cool. Uh, da -da 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 -da. All right, guys, let's see. The first deck. We're going to pull from two decks today. Bonnie, did you steal ragdoll as a verb from me? I don't know. I don't know. It was just in my awareness, so I used it. Um, when I fell off the chair. <laughs> maybe. Maybe that's why it was right there. Bonnie recently fell off a chair. <laughs> She's okay. <laughs> uh, but she had to ragdoll it so that she wouldn't bust her stuff. Um, all right, so we're going to pull from two different decks today. And the first deck, I want to ask what Mars and the nodes are helping us bring to balance. Mars, right by the south node in Libra, is the sign of balance. What are Mars and the nodes helping us bring to balance? And we're going to use this Moonology Messages Oracle. I think I've only used it once or maybe twice here on Insight Timer. Um, I'm not really that familiar with this deck yet, but... What the hell? It's an Aries full moon. We are restarting the full moon cycle. So let's see. Amy says, I'm about to move to California for six months from Canada. I did grow up in California, but it's been nearly 17 years since I've lived there. I still have friends and family, which is why I'm going to reconnect to myself and my people after an increasingly hard few years. But I had to give up my apartment here and currently packing up the last 17 years of my life into storage. Very nerving not to know what's going to happen and what I will do when I come back. I'm an Aries. <laughs> Go, start. That sounds so exciting to me. Um, fear and excitement create the same feelings inside the body. This tells you what you're, what's happening. You get to decide. So, all right, um, I always do group readings, but they're always for all of us. So feel free to send your energy into these cards. Yeah, Joy, that's the ragdoll energy. Surrender, allow, and trust. I love that. 
And we're asking what Mars and the nodes are helping us bring to balance with this full moon. I will allow three cards to fall out of the deck. And then um, I will show you the backs of the cards. So you're going to see that same image three times. And I ask you to look at the cards with a different perspective. Um, looking at them with your third eye. And I'm sure a lot of you are like, what are you talking about? How do you do that? Um, so when I hold up the cards, I ask you to just notice if anything changes. That could be your physical body, um, a twitch, an itch, a belch, a sneeze. Um, I don't know. Uh, anything in your physical body, if you just start to feel heat, you know, anything. Or if anything in your physical environment changes when I hold up a card, maybe like a car makes a noise outside or uh, an ad comes on your YouTube video or something. Um, that's all the universe speaking to you and just letting you know that maybe that card has a deeper meaning for you. If nothing changes, your intuition is not broken. The whole reading is for you and which it always is. Um, so yeah, try not to put too much pressure on this and just notice, just go with it. Just ragdoll and see what the universe wants to do. So here is the back of card number one. The back of card number two. And the back of card number three. So let us know in the chat if any of those are resonating with you any strongly. My words today. Wow. You would think Mercury is retrograde. Morgan says, I love that, Jackie. My therapist used to say anxiety is excitement without breath. I like that. That is pretty awesome. And Libra, we are in Libra season. The sun's in Libra. Libra is an air sign. It's all about the breath. I'm going to show you the cards one more time, just in case. <clears throat> what are Mars and the nodes helping us bring to balance? Here's the back of card number one. The back of card number two. And the back of card number three. Let's see. Jackie is working with two and one. Bonnie, two and three. S, two. Patty, two. Win, two. Patty, two. Sandy, three. Deborah, three. Melissa, three. Chantel, one and two. Excuse me. Joy, one. Lori, one and two. Wendy, one. Brenda, one and three. Jennifer, one and three. Christine, three. Alice, two and three. Tiffany, what if all the cards felt the same? Then the whole reading holds an equal amount of importance. Avon, uh, th three. Really green tone jumped out from card surface. Interesting. Greg, one and three. Melissa, three. I heard a rain stick sound, but my son didn't. Elisa, two and three. Sandy, one, two, three. Amy, one. Lisa, three. Linda, two. Darlene, two. Hi, Darlene. Mari, number two. Alice, three. Christine, all three today. Sherry, two and three. Anique, maybe all. Debbie, we are asking, what are the, the moon and Mars helping us bring to balance? Um, and I will just throw this out here right now as I'm trying to do alphabet and uh, I always record these sessions and I put them on my YouTube channel. So if you come in a little bit in between the session, you can always search my name on YouTube and uh, catch up on whatever you missed, which is whatever. You're welcome, Debbie. Nikki, I missed, but I'm doing all three. Cool. Imani is working with one and three. <laughs> Thank you, Jackie, for your donation. It's appreciated. 
All right, guys, what are Mars and the nodes helping us bring to balance? Who was just talking about anxiety and excitement without breath? Because uh, card number one is Moonstruck, take a breath. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. The word Moonstruck sounds dreamy and gorgeous, but in fact, it means someone who's gone a little crazy. Drawing this card means that you may be becoming obsessive or just going too far with regards to whatever situation you're asking about. It's like someone who says they're madly in love. Madly? Is that really a good idea? This card comes with a message to get your feet back on the ground. If you've been a little bit hysterical or his histrionic? Um, Bonnie, can you define histrionic? It's time to pair that back as well. Take a couple of deep breaths. Try to get your situation into perspective. There's nothing to be gained by allowing yourself to be completely and utterly overwhelmed by your emotions. Think of the cycles of the moon. The moon takes a full fortnight to move from new to full. She grows a little in size every day as she swells to her beautiful full self. So when you draw this card, you too need to allow things to progress at a more appropriate pace. Thank you, Bonnie. Histrionic is excessive in your emotions. So the, um, the nodes of the moon and Mars are helping us balance our emotions how much uh, emphasis we're placing on whatever situation is coming to mind right now. That's Libra, Joy. Yeah, take a breath, pause. No need to rush into it. You're gonna get it done. It's gonna happen. Um, this does feel very Aries to me. Um, the, the opposite of the balance that this card is bringing us to. Aries is like, yeah, I got it. Let's go. I have all the energy right now. Let's start. Let's do the whole thing today. And then tomorrow we'll do a whole nother thing. And this is very Libra. Just take a breath. Just slow down. Um, you don't need to conquer the world today. You don't need to solve all your problems today. Know that taking one step in the right direction is more than zero. One step is enough. One step is okay. Slow down. Yeah, I feel like it's that balance between effort and surrender. You can't force your way through life. You can, but I think you're going to be miserable. If you put so much emphasis and control on your life, you're not allowing the universe to drop blessings in for you. Card number two, what are Mars and the nodes helping us bring to balance at this full moon? Card number two is ring around the moon protection. This is one of the most auspicious cards in the deck because it's sending you a very powerful message. You are protected. In other words, whatever happens next the Divine Mother, often symbolized by the moon, is looking after you. It may be that someone is actively working against you now, or perhaps at the moment you have simply, what? Or perhaps at the moment you simply have quite tough astrological influences that you need to counteract. This card is a reminder that the Divine Mother takes care of her children and will take care of you now. It's as though there's an invisible force field or shield around you now, making sure you're safe as you move through a challenge or a difficult time. Whatever is happening now is most certainly happening for your highest good. So trust in that knowledge and go with the process as much as you can. Your current dilemma may even have something to do with your life purpose, what you came here to achieve in this incarnation. 
Maybe your question doesn't feel that big, however. It could be bigger than you realize. That was interesting. Maybe your question doesn't feel that big. However, it could be bigger than you realize. Our question was, what are Mars and the nodes helping us bring into balance? So maybe this is a huge closure that we're not aware of yet. This is, this is the last full moon before we go into eclipse season. And eclipse season in general brings monumental change. It's usually something like there's an energy around the month of eclipse season and then six months later a year later you look back at that time and you realize that man that was a huge catalyst for what is happening now um but here's the protection these first two cards just walk right into each other um first card is telling us to take a breath it's okay let the universe play it out for you and then here divine mother is protecting you it's okay to take that breath because you literally have a layer of protection around you. Divine protection, mind you. The moon looks like it's floating. I like that, Christine. Mari feels that. It looks 3D, like it's floating on the card and actually moving. Oh, that is pretty cool. Wow, I see that. Tiffany, oh my god, it makes sense why all the cards felt the same. Yeah, I can't wait to see what that last card is. Gloria, it really is a big closure for me. Darlene, wow, this is bigger around my fundamental life path protection. Yeah, 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 Greg, it's okay, we're safe. Always, everything always works out. We always have guidance and protection. Sometimes we just forget because we try to control our outcome. And notice... Why am I, this, this is a little bit out of alphabetical order, sorry. Um, when I say that kind of stuff, I hope you guys pick up on the fact that I say like, we do this and we all and all this stuff. Like I'm not perfect, I make these mistakes also. I've worked through a lot of this stuff and I'm still like excited when I figure out another like, oh, that's something I can work on. Like, oh, I'm noticing I'm doing that thing again. And it's not about beating yourself up about it. Just, Oh, here's that thing again. Okay, let's see what we can do about it. Oh, I'm trying to control my outcome. <laughs> I wonder why that's happening. Melinda, yes, a huge closure for me coming. And I keep hearing the message about protection around me. I love it. Let's see what card number three has to say about what Mars and the nodes are helping us bring to balance. Card number three is moon rising. And the message is truth. There's no hiding when this card comes up. The truth is going to come out. Or maybe it already has. But you still need to face up to it. As Buddha was reported to have said, three things cannot long be hidden. The sun, the moon, and the truth. When this card comes up, the only thing to do is to be scrupulously honest with yourself. Face facts. Maybe you need to show your feelings a little more. Maybe there's a situation you need to be more honest about. Are you showing how you feel or how you are hiding? What is the truth of your situation? Are you being honest with yourself and everyone else? If you are, then this card is a positive omen, telling you that everything is going to work out just fine because the truth will out. I think that's a typo, guys, sorry. Um, because the truth is out. There is also a sense with this card that the truth will be exposed sooner rather than later, so it shouldn't be too long before the issue you're wrestling with will be resolved. But make sure you are absolutely transparent and truthful. What I'm getting from this card, okay, so Libra is one of the signs that represents truth. It is the, the justice sign. It's all about the law. It's about divine truth, divine law and order. So this is saying that like the truth is going to come out one way or another. In 
A situation like this. Also, Libra is the sign of relationships, one-on-one -on -one partnerships. In order for the truth, we, you, we have to be guided by truth, right? It's authenticity. If we try to go through this incarnation lying and playing face and wearing a mask and, and pretending to keep the status quo, nothing is ever going to be what it truly is supposed to be, what it truly can be. And you can't ever control what other people do, which I think I'm still working through that. Um, but you can always be truthful yourself. Authenticity. By sharing your true emotions about a situation, instead of people-pleasing, right? Instead of saying like, oh, it's okay, you don't need to do that. I don't want you to feel a burden. I don't want you to whatever. Say like, well, I'm feeling this way. When in this situation right now, these are my true feelings. And then let the other person give from their heart. There might be like a an immediate backlash, you know? They're not used to hearing your truthful feelings, but that doesn't mean it's going to last forever. If you've also been in a theme of people-pleasing, in a pattern of people-pleasing, just know that once you start to back away and you start to put yourself first, the people in your environment who are used to your people-pleasing self, they're going to start to just question it. Like, why? This person used to always bend over backwards for me. Like, what's happening? And it doesn't mean it's a bad thing to put yourself first. There's just going to be a transition period. But the truth has to come out. And all you can do to have your control of the situation, you can control yourself and what you put out. So I feel like this is calling, this is letting you know, like, if you haven't been truthful with how something is affecting you, it's time. It's time. Hey, this is the Moonology Messages Oracle. Thank you, Morgan. Tiffany says, this card makes me nervous, but I can't tell if it's good or bad. There is something I've been awaiting some truth, but from someone else. Here's my theory for everything. There is no good or bad. Everything just is. We decide how we clarify and how we categorize things in our life. So the truth is the truth. You can make it good. <laughs> you can make it bad. Uh, if you find out uh, something that's going to rock your world, right? Something that's going to be the tower moment. It's, the rug's going to get pulled out from under your feet and you feel like you're left at square one. You can look at that from a negative lens and say like, oh man, I lost everything. Ah, poor me. Or you can say, this is pretty cool. I get a fresh start. I get to start over. I get to reassign my role in society. You know, like I get to whatever. Everything just is. But don't worry, the Divine Mother is here to protect you. 100%. And okay, so there's a cool thing. So take a breath, pause, like stop trying so hard is what I'm getting from that first card. Just chill, slow down, it's okay. Divine Mother's got you, she's protecting you. So when the truth does come out, don't forget about this protection. It's not like she, she is picky and choosy with when she wants to protect you. You have divine protection 24 seven. You get to choose to use it or not. So, ugh, ugh, truth. The more you allow yourself to be swayed by events and things that happen, the less um, control you feel, obviously, right? Ugh, ugh, oh, I have so much coming through. Um, this. Mars and the South Node want you to take a breath and just chill. So when the truth does come out, instead of reacting and saying like, oh my God, how am I going to figure this out? What's my life going to be like in six years? This is going to ruin everything. Just take a breath. Just chill. Just chill. If something comes to light that you weren't expecting, just take a breath first. 
this could be like a cyclical thing. <laughs> Take a breath now, remember that you're being protected, and then the truth comes out. And then when the truth comes out, Take a breath, know that you're being protected, and then maybe a deeper truth will come out. A more um, leveling truth. Jackie says, Tiffany, maybe you already know the truth. Joy, yes, my favorite mantra. But um, it is what it is, but it will become what I make of it. I like that, Joy. It is what it is, but it will become what I make of it. Thank you, Kay. She says, I love the way you explain things. Thank you for your donation, Darlene. Tiffany says, I agree, Kay. I love the examples for how to move through these events. Asking a Virgo to take a breath is like asking them to walk the plank. I know. <laughs> I know lots of Virgos. Um, all right, so that was the first spread. And we're going to pull one more card from a different deck. Oh, can you remind me of the name of your YouTube so I can watch this again, April? You can just search my name really anywhere on the internet. I think I have a very unique name. So if you want to find me, what I'm doing, I'm all over the place. I'm like a firework and I'm landing in all these different places. Um, so yeah, just search my name on the internet and uh, I'll come up all over the place. And my link tree, thank you, April, is also in my Insight Timer bio. Um, and I'll talk about that in a second. So we're gonna pull a second card from a second, or a, a fourth card. One card, <laughs> one more card from a second deck. We're gonna use the Star Codes Astro Oracle to ask which cycle is ending. What is coming to a close right now? So just one last card to wrap that up thank you bonnie for your donation feel free to send your energy into this deck what cycle is coming to a close what cycle has ended what cycle is ending we'll see what the, how the card wants to take that question um if you've been enjoying today's session, if you'd like to offer an energy exchange in the form of a donation, they're always appreciated. Um, and then if you would like to exchange your energy in other ways, you can find me on social media and whatnot and um, comment on my stuff and share my stuff and talk about me to your friends. <laughs> um, but yeah, my link tree is in my Insight Timer bio. And that's where you can find my website. That's where you can find links for my TikTok, my YouTube, my Facebook, um, my podcast. That I'm starting to revamp. I started a podcast in the winter tucked it away. My friend and I started the podcast. We tucked it away in the summer because we were having fun. <laughs> and now that the cold weather is coming again, we're doing that again. So it's like a, a woo-woo type podcast. We talk about all sorts of woo-woo stuff. Um, it's on YouTube and Spotify. This is the most awkward part of this session is telling you guys what I do, but I know I need to tell you. Um, I also have an email list where I send very periodic emails not very often uh yeah all the stuff's in my link tree just check it out see what i do if you want all right so we're asking what cycle is closing you hear the dogs i think they're excited about this message. Thank you, Christine, for your donation. Jackie says, working with Jackie is a gift to yourself. Thank you. Melinda says my dogs are reacting. <laughs> and they're done. See, sometimes they just want to be acknowledged. <laughs> they wanted to play a part on today's event, and they did, and that was it. My dogs are adding power. The dogs are adding power to this message. Yeah, they're howling to the moon. I love that. All right, so what cycle is coming to an end? Pluto, the planet of rebirth. Before I read this card, Pluto is literally right now closing out a 20-year cycle. He is finishing up his time in Capricorn. He's about to be fully into Aquarius, which since 
my awakening in 2020, I knew that when Pluto moved into Aquarius, that was like the, ah, uh, from all whatever the hell just happened for the last three years. I'm waiting <laughs> patiently. Pluto dipped his toe into Aquarius. He retrograded back. He's going to do that again. He's going to dip his toe into Aquarius. He's going to retrograde back. That'll happen next year. And then at the in about one year, Pluto will walk into Aquarius and go on his merry way. So I'm just saying that before I read the card. I don't remember what the card description says about this. So that could play with what cycle is ending. We'll see. So what cycle is ending? Pluto is the modern ruler of Scorpio and is a powerful planet. Oh, we're also going through the US Pluto return. <gasps> Pluto takes about 250 years to cycle around the whole zodiac. When the United States was signed into existence, um, the astrologers will use the, the signing of the Declaration of Independence as like the moment of birth for the United States. And <clears throat> Pluto, <clears throat> With his retrograde dance, he's passing over his return spot a few times. Um, in other civilizations, when Pluto returns, they fall. Pluto's the planet of destruction. Okay, that's all I'm saying. U.S. Pluto return is currently happening as well. Um, Pluto's a powerful planet that takes 248 years to traverse the zodiac. Pluto and Chiron, the largest of its five moons, circle each other and create a binary system. Most myths connected to Pluto, god of the underworld, have two major characters. The one who descends into the underworld to return reborn, and the one who either sends souls down to the underworld or greets them on arrival. From Pluto and Prospina, Pros, Proserpina, to Seth and Osiris, and Inanna to, I'm not even trying these names anymore, both sides of these myths, the use and abuse of power, and the willingness to be reborn again into their empowered divine self, describe Pluto's influence. Pluto was also the lord of mining, retrieving valuables from deep within the earth. Pluto calls for three actions. First, to dig deep. Second, to be willing to transform. And third, to use power wisely. Pluto calls you to drill down, dig up what is worthy, and bring it to the surface. Then, rinse away the dirt and uncover the gold. Bring up riches whenever you dig deep into your soul's work. Notice obsessions and neuroses. These signs of stress must be listened to and healed, but don't allow them to control you. Is anyone else hearing this card right there? Pluto reminds you that you can't hold on to the past, but you can take care of yourself. To begin this work, you may have to let go of an old form, as a caterpillar must become a butterfly. Mourn what you've left behind then get curious about what is about to arrive. Examine the power dynamics of the situation. Neither give yours away nor misuse your power over others. Step out of a power struggle and into self-empowerment. Ah! Um, there's a challenge and a spiritual gift from Pluto. The challenge, Pluto's shadow side can bring up obsession depression, mortality, and grief. Pluto plays hardball, so get a guide for this realm if needed. Spiritual gift from Pluto. Pluto asks you, in the face of life and death, why are you here? This isn't a rhetorical question. Strip down to the essentials and come back to what really matters to find the answer. Loaded card. What cycle is coming to an end? <clears throat> I think this is the cycle of being down there and digging, being in the shadows, being down in the underworld. I think that that part of our journey, it, metaphorically right now, is coming to an end. 
And Pluto is reminding you that you get to bring some shiny stuff back up to the surface. Like, have you been in the trenches? Have you been down there in the depths for a long time? It is possible to get stuck in your shadow work. It is possible to lament on your shadows, to feel like every time something comes up, it has to be healed right away. But have you, have you brought up gold from the shadows that you've been exploring before? Have you taken the time to do that? Thank you, Melinda, for your donation. Appreciate that. Tiffany, goodbye, Pluto. Nice having you. I mean, he's still going to be here. He's just going to be in a new sign. Bonnie says, yep, same as card one. Yeah, Pluto can cause you to get obsessive. Um, looking at the darkness and saying, like, don't you see the darkness? Look at the darkness, everyone. Look at it. Look at the darkness. Just take a breath. crazy, Tiffany. My horoscope said that's my theme through the end of this year, working on trauma. Interesting. Eddie says, ding, ding, ding. Greg, been digging through the depths for many years now. Same. Maybe Pluto's letting us know that this is finally coming to an end. All the truth that's been exposed for the last few years, especially coming to an end. The nodes of the moon. Before July, they were in Taurus and Scorpio. South node Scorpio exposing secrets. There's been a lot of truth that has come out. Um, some have seen it, some have not. I think that that kind of stuff is over. I think it's, it's out. Information is out. Do with it what you want make of it what you want. Um, take a breath about it also. Take a breath. You know, everything's always going to work out. Everything always has. Everything always will. You're safe and protected. Divine protection. Um, no boogeyman is ever coming to get you. I think that that's all up here. That's all up here. People can try, but I don't think they're ever going to get you unless you let them get you. But you're always protected. So just get out of here. Get into here. That's where the protection is. So yeah, if you've been digging for years, what have you found? Maybe it's time to reflect. Greg says so ready to move forward too. Yeah. Mary Alice, dig deep what? And use power wisely? What was that second purpose for Pluto? Uh, where's the three? Pluto calls for three actions. First, to dig deep. Second, to be willing to transform. Third, to use your power wisely. Are you attached to your shadows? That's one of those tough love questions. That can be a hard pill to swallow. Are you attached to your shadows? Um, it's okay. You know, it's, it's, um, it happens. It doesn't mean it's serving your highest good, but it's understandable to get attached to your shadows. It's comfortable. No, I am this limiting belief way. How dare you tell me that I could be bigger than this? Like, no, I, I am like this. This is me. This is my story. This is my trauma. Let it go. Let it go and find what's down there. Eddie says, love the chrysalis and walking into the unknown. Getting out of the way. What is the brain wanting to know what's next? Getting out of the way is the brain wanting to know what's next. Yeah. Of. Getting out of the way of the brain wanting to know what's next. Yeah. Your mind. The, the thinking. It's so powerful. And you can change what it does. Greg says the nice thing about digging is we can unearth treasure and jewels. Mm-hmm. 100%. 
How are pearls made? They're put under immense pressure. How is coal made? Or I mean, wow, how are diamonds made? They're put under immense pressure. Rebecca, I've been trying so hard to detach from my shadow for so long. Um, the first step, what I've found is full acceptance without shame. This is part of my past. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for what you have served for me. Now it's time to go. <sighs> Greg, pearls are a collection of dust and dirt in an oyster. I didn't realize that. A collection of dust and dirt. Ugh. Everything just is. You decide what you're going to do of it. Thank you, Bonnie. Bonnie is reminding you guys, I have a cord cutting on my YouTube channel. Um, I think, so I have like, what are they called? Playlists. Um, and I have one that is for guided meditations. And it's in there. It's a cord cutting meditation. I'm pretty sure it was one of these insight timer sessions. So it might be like the whole description of everything, but click ahead and find it if you want to cut some cords. Um, you can cut cords to another person. You can cut cords to a past version of yourself. You can cut cords to a situation in the past. Pretty cool stuff, guys. So there we have it. Aries full moon happening at 4.57 a.m. tomorrow morning, central time. Full moon at six degrees of Aries. This feels like a dynamic of letting go of people pleasing and being able to stand in your power for what you want and what you need. All with love, no aggression. All with love, self-love, outward. Take a breath. You don't need to obsess over the whole situation, just breathe allow it to run its course know that divine mother is always protecting you there's nothing to be afraid of fear in my opinion is all in here and then it resonates and you feel it in your body but it all starts here divine mother's protecting you and share your truth Share your truth. And maybe by doing all that, you will learn and have a deeper understanding of how to come up from the shadows and bring your oyster, your pearl, your jewel, your gold. Thank you so much, Charlotte, for your donation. I appreciate you. Okay, when you cut cords, will that person no longer contact you? Spiritual work is hard to guarantee um, because it also has to do with the power that you give the meditation. Um, when I do cord cuttings, I see that, so before the cord cutting, I can see that there is an energetic connection between me and someone or something else. And how that might manifest is like, you always think about it, it comes up a lot, you're triggered by things that remind you of it, a person is contacting you, like that could signify that there's an energetic cord of connection. By cutting the cord, it's... If you half-ass cut it, you're not gonna like fix the situation. Um, it's that whole, it's the same as like uh, accepting. So accepting that this was the situation that happened, accepting that this cord was created, looking at it, examining it, finding what has come from it, what you may have been borrowing from each other. It's a whole like process. It's not just, oh, here's a cord, see ya, done forever. Um, but yeah, once you cut the energy, you return to your own sovereignty. That's the intention, is that you claim your own energy and you give them their energy back. 
what happens after that, you know, I would encourage you to release expectations. Take a breath. It's when you expect and you hang on to if this, then this. Spirituality doesn't necessarily work like that. Um, so it could happen that you cut a cord and they continue to contact you, but they contact you from a different energy or you receive them with a different energy. They could stop contacting you. Um, they could contact you with an apology and saying like, hey, sorry, this is what I did, blah, blah, blah. So there's a whole lot of options that can happen afterwards, but it's all for your highest good. Doing this type of work will result in your highest good. I don't know what your highest good is. I don't think your conscious mind knows what your highest good is, but the universe does. And she's protecting you. So, I hope that answers your question. Christine, does it still have the dog in it? I love that uncut version of your cord cutting. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the one that's on YouTube. When my dogs start barking during the meditation. Thank you, Greg. Powerful session today. Feels hopeful and inspiring. Lovely. Thank you so much, Charlotte and Sandy, for your donations. I appreciate that. Eddie, oh, inner standing. Love that. I've been um, watching that word, inner standing. Um, words are powerful. Understanding, standing under something else. I do not consent. Tiffany, I feel silly. What's a cord cutting other than the phrase? I read up on it. It says I understood. Yeah, that, and I hope that my um, explanation helped a little bit. Try the meditation. See what, see what comes out of it. Jackie, I find that cord cuttings change your own energy toward that person or event. You may still have a connection, but you may not feel the same tie. Thank you for saying that. Yeah, if you have like a, if you're hanging on to a part of a situation, if you're hanging on to the anger, you're hanging on to the victimhood of like, they hurt me. Let it go. Let it go. Okay, cool. They hurt me. They did it because they were hurt. Doesn't mean it like makes it all better, but like hanging on to the fact that like they're the bad guy doesn't freaking do anything. I also just made a TikTok yesterday about my opinions on the word narcissist. So if you're curious about an unpopular opinion, search me on TikTok. I love it. Um, okay, thank you. Christine's agreeing with her soul sister. That's all right, Nikki. She says she got distracted. Catch me next time. I will be back on Monday. Next week, I'm here Monday and Wednesday. And I hope to see you then. 8.15 Central, all the time. A.M. 8.15 A.M. Central time. Uh, this will be on YouTube. Thank you for being here. Thank you for all the donations. They're appreciated. Thank you for your insights and your sharing and your wisdom and just your energy. I will see you guys on Monday. Sending love to all. Namaste. Have a wonderful full moon, a wonderful weekend.